Hello, welcome. Hello, welcome. I'm just going to jump right back into it because basically all of the updates that I have here are picking up right where I left off at the end of the last video. So if we head into these track lighting junction boxes, you can see that I have some wiring run. As we get into this range, you can see I have a couple of lighting tracks put in. These are a couple of the random spare pieces of lighting track that I've picked up the past few years during cleanup week. Moving into this space and knowing that I'd want to do some track lighting eventually, I have kept an eye out and grabbed what I've seen. I've expressed before that white is not exactly my favorite finish for lighting track, but when it's free, I'm not going to complain. And yes, I could paint it, but I'm not going to bother because it looks just fine as it is. In the studio area, of course, I was a little bit more picky and wanted to be more cohesive since it's going to be in practically every video that I make. But out here on the display, it's really not about the lighting track. I don't really care if it all matches or anything like that. It's really just providing me with the functional light that I need, and there's really no design statement with it whatsoever. So those are in place, and they do have wiring run to them. I just haven't hooked any of this together yet. And then this is all the further I got with the wiring. I got kind of preoccupied with putting the tracks in and then didn't run any further down. I think right now I am going to run a wire over to this box so that I can make the connections up in this one. And then I do want to work back across and make up the rest of these boxes so that we can run the power through them and maybe light up these tracks. So I'm going to go ahead and run this wire and then I'll get back to you as I get into the rest of this. All right, you guys, sorry if the video quality looks different. I just realized that I was on the wrong setting. But back to the topic at hand, you guys know that usually things take way longer than I think they will, and I always run out of time to get things done. But this has actually progressed along very quickly, and I already have all of my junction boxes tied together. Right now I'm not bothering with stuffing the wiring in and closing them up because I know that I will be coming back and tapping off most of them again. So I'm probably just going to leave them like this for the time being. Right now I just have these two tracks left to hook up. Then I have to go back into the panel and just land the black wire on the breaker. With nothing else on this circuit, I just thought it would be safer to leave the breaker out for the time being. I didn't want somebody to turn it on accidentally, but I do already have the ground and neutral terminated, so that's just going to be a really quick hookup. So I'm going to go and make these last few hookups, and I will be back. All right, you guys, everything is tied together, power is on, and I have the new switch labeled. I think what I will do is turn the display off so that you can see this part a little bit better. And here we go, I will turn them to full brightness. So these are really just a few of the track heads that I do have available right now. This is not going to be the final setup. I just wanted to show kind of an idea of what this could accomplish as far as lighting is concerned. With a grander statement piece like the Broadway installed here, I was also thinking it might be neat to have some lights shining on it. I'm not sure if I'll keep that, but that's what I'm demonstrating here. I will say it probably wouldn't be good for full display videos because the lights would be strobing behind all the fans in that type of video. But on a more regular basis where all the fans aren't running together, I thought it might be neat. If we go back and turn the display back on, most of this kind of settles out a little bit more and it's not quite so harsh. I do really like having this table lit up a little bit more. Obviously, it's not going to stay filled with ceiling fans like this forever. I'm hoping to utilize it in some different ways down the road. Once all this stuff gets cleared away, it will be a nice way to anchor this space. Up here, you can see this is a little less harsh with the rest of the surrounding lights on. So I'm thinking with where I'm at right now, I might as well pull this fan down and we'll get the Broadway put up. I'm not quite ready to shove the table back yet, but I think I will be in a relatively short period of time, so I'm not too concerned about it. I especially want to get the Broadway up in this video because I said that I probably would in the last video and then I didn't. So let's just go ahead and get it done.
so here's where we've ended up. It does hang lower, but I think the vast actually hangs just ever so slightly lower yet. So I'm glad that the Broadway doesn't feel too burdensome. I think moving out further back, it actually looks really good within the space. I did dim the track lights down while I was up there working, so I'm going to put them back to full brightness. On camera, having them dim doesn't show up very well. I think it actually looks better with them dimmed down. I think just seeing what output I'm getting from this already, they are rarely going to be on full brightness. Especially as I get more put up around the perimeter, I think half brightness is probably going to do it in most cases. With this setup, I do get some strobe off of the Broadway, but first and foremost, this fan probably isn't going to be running all that often. And then secondly, as I get the table readjusted and some more track heads, I'm probably going to do two on either end of the track instead of one in the center. That will help get some distance between the light and the end of the blades. Again, as I said, I'm going to leave this setup as it is for right now, but it is definitely not the final setup. Before I wrap this up, I will just show you that I got a W11 control in the wall for the Broadway. All labeled up and ready to go, I chose the W11 because I thought it complemented the earlier IntelliTouch fan a little bit better. So with that, my time has run out and I've done all that I can do for tonight. I'm not sure where I'm going to be when I come back, but I will see you soon for more. Hi everybody and welcome back. After a quick relaunch into this video, it has been a while since those last clips you saw. I've had a few consecutive sections of days off from my other job, which isn't normal, so I've been taking the opportunity there to pre-film for some of my review videos and brand-related stuff going into the end of the year. Near the end of the year, it does get a little bit busy to go into full production mode every single month, so any little bit that I can get done in advance is a big help. Mostly, I haven't had time to do anything, so I have a couple of quick things, and then I think I want to do a little bit of display work. So first of all, picking up where I left off with with the track lighting. I did grab a few of the track heads that I plan to use throughout most of the space. I like these because they're very small and low profile. As I get into the stuff around the perimeter, I think many of the tracks are going to be running above the fan blades, therefore the lights will also be above the fans. So in most places, I probably can't be using big chunky track heads because the blades will likely hit them. So as you can see, I have them just shining straight down, which is essentially all that I wanted from these. I did eliminate the ones that were shining onto the Broadway. I did really like how the fan looked, but what I didn't like about it was looking at the fan from any angle you had a light bulb just shining in your eyes. I felt like that aspect just negated anything that it added to the fan, so it was worth a try but it didn't work out and the effect that I'm getting now is much more along the lines of what I wanted. Obviously the table is not in correct placement under them yet. With this part in, I do really want to get that table in correct placement but I don't feel that it's worth doing until I get more of the track lighting runs in place. I will have to access these boxes again when I do that and the table is fine where it is for now so I'm not going to bother having to move it multiple times. So I think that covers everything that I wanted to relay to you there. With that out of the way I can move on to this major update. I just finished this a couple of days ago. It's been a work in progress because I had to redo the whole box and mounting up here. I didn't want to have to get a longer down rod and custom cut it so I just made this work. With the videos going up this was just hanging in back and I just think it's way too neat to put back in the box. To be quite honest, I thought I was going to be receiving product from Maxim much earlier in the year, and early on I was thinking that I'd like to put a fandelier here at the bottom of the stairs, and with that in mind, I've been thinking of doing this for much longer than I've even had the product in hand. It's typical that just as I found a light fixture that I really liked for this location, I finally received the fandelier, but that's okay, it is what it is. I'll keep that light on hand and probably find a use for it someday. I think the weave fits in here really perfectly. It's a really grand statement right at the entrance. As I mentioned, I had to redo the mounting and box up there, but I also had to eliminate the dimmer. Clearly, I couldn't run the fan receiver on a dimmer, so I had to swap it out. I honestly didn't use the dimmer nearly as much as I thought I would, and it was kind of just more of a pain for everybody else to utilize. So I'm really not upset about it, especially since the fandelier has dimming built in. I really thought this one over, trying to figure out if I wanted to run an outlet over here and put it on with the other switched outlets, or if I wanted to try to 
run some other power for it, but really this just makes the most sense. It's just on and off with this other little track light system, and by the time you get about halfway down the stairs, the fandelier will pop on. If left on when the switch is turned off, the fan portion will also come back on, so that's nice. I have not mounted the remote yet. I think that I'll put it over here. And then since they're stacking up so high on this side, I'm thinking I'll move the Eliza and Canyonlands ones over on this side as well. Since I just have the one loose remote right now, it hasn't exactly been a priority. Actually, the main thing is I have to dig the cradle for the weave out of the big box, which is sitting over there. And quite honestly, that box is a pain to maneuver, so that's why it's been sitting there since I unpacked the fan and I have not touched it. But eventually I'm going to have to move it and I'll dig the cradle out then. So those are the brief couple updates that I have. Now onto the display stuff with National Ceiling Fan Day right around the corner. I do want to make some changes. I do want to make a couple of changes within this video, but as you know, I often like to keep some of them as a surprise as well. So I may not go too crazy with showing you everything, but right now I want to take down the Fasco decorator. It's been up since the display was originally completed, so it is due for a change. And in its place, I'm thinking KDK Renaissance. I need to see if it's going to hang too low. That's going to be the defining factor here. I've actually wanted to put that fan up more than once, but for a while I was a little bit heavy on the white and brass throughout this section with the Lancelot and the Lasco, so I thought it was maybe just a little bit too much, but right now I don't really have anything white and brass on the display, so it's the ideal time to put it up. I also have a little bit of an old school ornate section going on through here, so I think it'll fit nicely in this location. Location. But again, I need to test fit how low it hangs. The next two fans over also hang a little bit low. So I'm thinking in relation to these, it's probably going to be fine, but I need to see it in order to know for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Fasco down and we'll go from there. All right, so I've hung this up as a test fit, and it looks like it's going to be pretty similar to the Canyonlands next to it, so I'm going to go ahead with this. Another major factor of this choice is the stencil blades. I just realized the other day that I no longer have anything stencil up on display. That is, aside from the Canyonlands, which I guess I do consider to be stencil, but some people don't. In that regard, this is kind of the perfect location to be putting stencil because it sort of shows the progression of blade design. I've really been enjoying putting miniature themes like that into the display, kind of like I did with the originals over here. It sort of creates additional conversation points when I do have visitors through here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off this install. All right, so I just went off camera and got the switch relabeled, and it is up and running. I like it a lot. It's a refreshing change. I love that Fasco, which is why it's been on display for so long, but even fans I love get stale after a while. I think with this change, there's too much white happening in this section, and I'm going to want to change out the golden fan as well. It hasn't been up nearly as long, but I'm kind of ready for a change there. I'm going to have to think about what I want to put there, though, because I haven't even really thought about it until right now. But the other thing I have to get done before National Ceiling Fan Day and want to do right now is get this Victorian on a wall control. I mentioned a couple videos back that the Slumber Quiet went out, but because it's up on display, I don't want to deal with any kind of conversion or anything like that right now, so I'm just going to pop in one of the Emerson wall controls that produces speeds that I like, and that'll just have to be what it is for the time being. So I'm just going to hop off camera to do this. I'm not sure how much disassembly and digging I'm going to have to do to make this work. I have to rewire the light kit in the switch housing and potentially take down the entire canopy to get that third wire at the ceiling, so I'm just going to avoid producing a bunch of footage of nothing, and I will check back with you when I finish. 
So this is it. I have everything done and working. It was definitely more in-depth than I thought it would be going into it. I'd forgotten that the lead wires on this one were trimmed and re-spliced. Since the slumber had been working, I never tied in a new blue D1 option wire. I only realized this after I'd gone through the trouble of rewiring the light kit in the switch housing, so I ended up just taking off the down rod and re-splicing as I had done the other wires. Definitely was a bit of a pain, but I am happy with the end result. So that's going to wrap it up for me here right now. I didn't even think I'd get this part done today. I was really just looking to change out the Fasco. I'm not sure what I'll be doing when I see you again, but I'll see you back soon for more. Hey you guys, so once again I have been editing the video that you're currently watching and I see that I'm already getting pretty long. So I'm here to just do one final thing and then I'm going to close this video out and get it up for you. As I alluded to in that last segment, I am going to go ahead and swap out the golden fan. For this one, I think I am going to go with the Concept 3. I don't really have anything with the late 80s, early 90s contemporary vibe happening on the display right now, so I think this is a good fit. I am going to keep this light kit, and I think I will use the original glass that it came with. So this changeout is pretty much all that I have on the schedule for tonight. We are back up and running. I used 15 watt light bulbs to try to keep in line with the lighting scheme that I have going on this end. I think it's the perfect amount of light output, not too bright at all. I really didn't even think about it, but the Saturn stencil on this fan kind of falls in line with the stencil theme that I have going on through this section. So by pure chance, this one actually fits in perfectly with a larger theme. I always thoroughly enjoy having this fan installed. I don't Put it up too often to try to save on the flywheel, but it is really neat to see it up on this display. So like I said, that is going to wrap up this video. I mentioned earlier that there might be some more display changes for National Ceiling Fan Day off camera. To be honest, my time for doing that is already running a little bit short. I'm not going to make any promises that there will be anything changed for the National Ceiling Fan Day video, but that's mainly to set your expectations low. This year has just been so busy and I'm still pre-filming for review videos so there's just not a lot of spare time right now. I do want to have a nice display video up for National Ceiling Fan Day, so that also requires filming a little bit in advance. So there's not a lot of time left, and I don't want you to be expecting anything based on what I said earlier in the video. I'm going to head out, subscribe, and ring the notification bell before you leave. As always, thank you all for watching today, and I will see you next time. Well, Love you so much. Yep, that's it have a great episode. day, yep. a good life, and yep. mm -hmm. salutations. Yep. Bye. Click left to watch my last vlog or click right for the entire shop vlog playlist so that you can start at the beginning.